Our first Curious London shop is in historic Mayfair, and this particular shop has a quite curious claim to fame. Bentley and Skinner dates back to 1880 and houses antique and period jewelry and rare collections, and of course a little Fabergé thrown in for good measure. While this may look like a priceless museum collection not to be touched, all these pieces are in fact for sale or loan. You know, for that grand ball at Buckingham Palace you go to every year. So this is obviously my personal collection. I just wear a new tiara every day. Aren't so you that... a lucky one? <laughs> but what Bentley and Skinner is really known for is providing jewelry to the royal family for a very long time. That, to me at least, is, is one of the most interesting parts. So in the, the late 1800s, that would have been during the reign of Queen Victoria. That is correct, yes. And is that also the same time period where the company received the royal warrant? Yes, the Skinner & Co. received its first royal warrant during the latter reign of Queen Victoria. And we've had the warrant of the monarch since then. And later in the 1970s, we were privileged enough to receive the warrant of His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. So the company has two royal warrants, the Her Majesty's and the Prince of Wales. So what exactly is a royal warrant? For centuries, royal families around the world, including the United Kingdom, have issued royal warrants to tradesmen and companies to supply goods or services to the royal households. These special shops get to proudly display their seals of approval, and, as you might imagine, to be hand-selected by the royal family is the highest of honors. Having a royal warrant is quite a privilege for um, a, a company, any company. It just goes to show that um, we have the integrity and, most of all, discretion. To respect and protect the privacy of the royal family, Bentley and Skinner won't tell you who they've provided pieces for or which pieces, but there are a few carefully chosen photographs on display here. Without mentioning any names, because we are being respectful of the discretion here, we have six different tiaras here that may or may not have been worn by some members of the British royal family. Well, there's um, one in particular here that was actually worn on the coronation of um, George V, the grandfather of the current monarch, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and um, it, the lady who wore it uh, was a great society beauty. And so we're actually quite a privilege to have this in our collection. It's an elegant tiara because I think the pearl and diamond marriage is a wonderful marriage, is very gracious and not too ostentatious. Which is the oldest piece we have here? The oldest piece here, I believe, uh, is this tiara over here, late 1860s. Um, wonderful all-cut diamonds, very simple style. And remember, a lot of these tiaras are actually convertible as well. So when they're not being worn as tiaras, they can be worn as necklaces. They oh, wait, how, how would you yes, do that the, with the, this? The, the whole thing the... comes off its frame, and then, and then it's, this way? Then it's loose, and then uh, there's a back part of it, uh, the necklace part of it, so it can be worn as a necklace. So every lady must have a convertible tiara. Well, clearly. Oh, clearly. absolutely. Clearly. Would you like to try this one on? Well, yes. Well, yes. But the tiara isn't just an old-fashioned fashion. Some lucky Londoners still wear them today. Things like the Lord Mayor's Banquet here in London, diplomatic balls at Buckingham Palace where tiaras may be worn, and of course, Elton John, white ties and tiara. Of course, Hindi. of course. Tiaras to go with his tantrums. Well, no tantrums allowed or even sudden movements allowed when one is wearing a piece as beautiful as this that happens to be more than 150 years old. But why does anyone wear a tiara? Well, the history of this beautiful bejeweled head ornament dates back to ancient times, when a tiara, or diadem, signified royalty, with a glowing halo around the heads of those believed to have godlike status. And this idea of royalty being close to the gods is still around today. In fact, that is what a coronation is all about. Even today, when a king or queen gets crowned, the ritual still symbolizes the transference of the divine to the human. Whoa, that's a lot of pressure. While these vintage pieces are carefully stored, carefully worn, and carefully returned, Bentley and Skinner also creates new pieces on site. You can even watch the master jewelry maker at work through a lovely little window on Piccadilly. 
So whether you're just browsing and dreaming of living like a royal, or actually picking out the perfect piece for your next ball, just being inside this shop is to experience a bit of London history. Being British, being English, and having this heritage and this pride, you know, the royal family is part of being English. And be, how, how, do, how does it feel to get to work in this environment every day and you're, and you're continuing on the tradition? It is a, a, a great honor and a privilege, actually. And, uh, you know, I chose this company to come and work here. I was a banker. You know, we in England are very, very good at pageantry and we're very proud of that. Heritage is important. Once the heritage goes, I think you lose a great deal. But be careful, once you experience the royal life for even a moment, it may be hard to give it back. Oh yes, I think I need to wear this every day. I mean, I, I think that's clear.